Hey guys, Joe here with Federal Craft. We are here for uh, number two in the series of healthy camp cooking. Uh, kind of, this isn't going to be a, a camp meal, so to speak. This is going to be just, uh, well, quite frankly, I usually cook these before I camp. But uh, might as well do these all in one. Uh, it, it doesn't encompass one meal. It's uh, the items we're about to process or cook um, usually are used in different meals but uh, they're all made in basically the same manner so might as well get those uh, uh, show those first or show them all, all together so uh, anyway let's uh, get a fire going and uh, talk about today's foods Making a big fire. Mm-hmm. Big enough. It's not bigger than a big one. Yeah. It's done. You had one left wood. <laughs> Alright fellas, first of four up today. It's not exactly a food, but it is a camp necessity, in my mind anyway. And that is coffee. These are green coffee beans, and I'm going to show you how I roast them. Alright, well the idea is to dry roast. No oil, no nothing. Coffee beans have enough oil in them that it doesn't matter. Keep on stirring. Now this is about a on a campfire. It happens fast. On a grill or stove, it's about a 10-minute process. Just a quick rundown of what happens here. You just keep on stirring. And they'll gradually get more and more brown. And after about five minutes or so, they'll start popping, and there'll be like uh, the shell will come off, sort of, kind of like a paper thin shell. And uh, you want to continue through that, and really, it just takes practice. Um, it depends on how dark of a roast you want. Um, when the shell first starts to come off, that's what's called the, the first crack. Um, and coffee connoisseurs, which I am not one actually, um, will know what I'm talking about here. But uh, about halfway between the first crack and the second crack, which the the skin there's a second skin that will come off. That right there is what I'm talking about. That on the very end of the spoon. It, uh, that will happen twice. Anyway, New York City roast or what have you will happen about halfway to three quarters of the way between the first and second crack. And it really just depends on how hot your fire is. I mean, on a stove, it's easy to nail it down to time frames, but on a campfire, you know, you can't nail down how, oh, my fire is such and such hot. You know, all I can say is, is this is making me sweat. It's already 90 degrees out here. So, yeah, Larry, it's 90 degrees. Ha ha. 
So we're about three, four minutes in, we're already hitting that first crack. And the reason I have this angled up is as I'm stirring, it's it's uh, basically doubling the motion of my stirring. I stir it and it falls back to the other side. So it's just keep kind of helping me keep the movement going. And another thing I want to add is that if you're a serious coffee connoisseur, wouldn't use this right away. Um, and I can attest to the, the flavor change or the flavor difference. A roasted coffee bean, going from green to roasted, its peak flavor, as far as, far as how at the best point or the best flavor you're going to get out of it, is about 12-24 hours after you roast it. Just something happens in that resting process. I don't. I don't know what it is. I'm not a true coffee connoisseur. I mean, I love coffee. I drink it every day, all day long, basically. But and one thing you will find over a fire is that because it is so hot, and that you have to stop and switch hands and move the pan and other stuff, the heat kind of is more inconsistent than. Uh, a commercial roaster gives the coffee beans and so that first crack will last a lot longer because different beans are at different stages at any given time because they rest against the, the hot part of the pan longer or shorter periods of time just depending which bean they are and how they're angled so so at this point I would say about just judging by the color and again this is something that takes practice to find what you like and what flavor you like out of the beans and finding what color is good for you as to stop. If you notice, that's hot. Um, never exactly set them on fire before. All right. If you notice they're getting that oil slick sheen, I don't know if you can see past the smoke coming out of there. Um, once they start getting shiny, that is basically right in the center of the second crack, and that's where I like it. Um, that's the oil and the bean coming out. So uh, let's let this cool down enough so I can put it in a, back in its container, and we'll move on to the next item. This is just oat grouts. That is what oatmeal comes from. Now, if you think oatmeal's good, try it, try it made from fresh oat grouts. If you think uh, fresh oatmeal is good from oat grouts, try it toasted first. And this is a short one, really. It's not as much time investment. Just enough to provide a light toast to these things. It kind of it caramelizes the starches in there and just brings out a little bit more of the sweet flavor of oatmeal. It really just intensifies the flavor. Now if you burn it, mm, you're probably not going to enjoy it too much. Um, but it's yummy. Let the heat build back up on that pan a little bit. So basically, whereas coffee is going to take you about 10 minutes or so, these about 5 minutes, give or take, depending on how, you know. Again, it just goes back to how hot your fire is and how, how your setup is. I mean, you know, I'm set up on a stove. If you're cooking directly off the grill or um, directly, you know, if you have two logs wedged up against between your coals, and it's closer to the fire, further away from the fire, you know, it, it's just, there's a ton of variables here. You know, just, uh, it goes to practice, and I'm just trying to relate ideas. Not necessarily a specific recipe of, you know, it takes specifically 10 minutes to do this. I 
Oh, another question folks might have. All right, yes, these are oat grouts. That doesn't look like oatmeal, like most people are used to seeing. It's not the flakes. True, it's not. Um, you can still make regular oatmeal out of this. Um, it doesn't have the same texture. It doesn't have the same consistency uh, because it's not in flakes. Um, now, however, um, I have an oat flicker, um, and after I toast this, I can take it back to my house. And an oat flicker is not something I'm going to take with me in camp. Um, I can take this back to my house and uh, flake it up and then take it camping. And, you know, like I said before, at least I think I said before, this is something that I usually do um, before I actually go camping. And really, just because of the, the natural color of oat grouts, you won't really see a huge difference in color. It'll be, a, you know, slightly more brown. You don't want them a whole lot darker, or it'll bring up... Um, raw oatmeal has a, has a slight bitter taste to it, and um, if you burn it, it'll just... Instead of bringing out the sweetness, it'll bring out uh, the bitterness. So, you just want it lightly toasted. Caramelize the starches just enough to intensify the sweet, but not so much that it uh, intensifies intensifies the uh, the bitter. Now these also they're a bit chewy. I like them just straight up as is, as just to eat it like you know sunflower seeds or peanuts or whatnot, just you know straight out of the bag after they're toasted. My family kind of thinks I'm weird. So, you know, personal preference, I guess. And guys, that's just about done. Some of them are a little under, some of them are a little bit over, but that's about as close as I want to take it without ruining it. So, all right, we'll move on. Well, guys, I don't know if you can see over the ground on the upper right-hand side of the screen. I thought my oats were cooler than they actually were. And, uh... Yeah, melted right through the bottom of my, my baggie. So, uh, anyway, I guess the squirrels are going to be happy tonight. So, move on to number three. <sighs> Alright, for this, you're going to need some grease. Um, we have here is coconut oil. just enough to coat the bottom of the pan. We're not deep frying here. We're just keeping it from burning, basically. You are gonna want probably some seasoning anyway. I have Old Bay, it's my go-to. Next up on the docket, guys, and uh, this is a bit <laughs> Um, it's going to pop and sizzle a little bit more than normal because it's wet. But this is corn. This is dried corn. Um, organic from our lo local health food store. Um, it's wet because I rinsed it. It comes dusty. And uh, the more dust that's in it when you kind of flash fry it like this, um, it burns quicker. So um, usually, I, like I said, I did this inside. And that's a bit too much. Oh well, we'll make do. Um, anyway, usually I have time to dry it after I rinse it. But what we're doing is we're parching corn. Now, there is a lot of information on the web about parched corn. I'm going to add just a little bit more grease to this. Or coconut oil as the case may be. Um, there's a lot of information on the web about this and about this process and uh, history usage. Um, I'm not so sure what I believe about it. Um, you know, some folks, I've even seen it on YouTube, say that, you know, Indians, whether Native Americans or South American Indians, would, uh, you know, they would take a bag about this size of crushed parched corn and that's what they'd live off of for a month you know I'm not a nutritionalist by any stretch of the imagination 
However, I am somewhat learned, and uh, I personally don't see that happening, but, you know, I'm not going to say it didn't. So, um, again, I'm not, uh, as, far as, as far as health choices, I'm not going to say uh, what to believe. You guys can make your own conclusions, do your own research, and uh, go from there, because yeah, opinions, everybody has one. And, uh, you know, I'm not interested in getting in arguments or debates. I'm just showing you how I do it. And basically, it's the same process. You add just a little bit of grease with this. That's the only difference. You stir it around until it's nice and toasted. And because it has oil in it, uh, seasoning will stick to it. And so towards the end, basically right before I take it off the heat, I will uh, add a little bit of salt or Old Bay or something you know like I said Old Bay is my go-to um, so that's you know basically all we're doing here is making homemade corn nuts that's uh, essentially all we're doing and uh, I've used these crushed up in bannock crushed up in soups just to add a little bit of texture um, you have to add it towards the end or they'll get soggy and not have any texture, but, you know. Again, I'm just showing you how I do things. And, uh, again, you know, I, I know I've said this two, three, four times. I typically do this at home before I head out into the field, but... The key here is, is just constant attention, constant stirring. And uh, ideally, I guessed, um, this is the first time I've used this frying pan for this. This is a bit too much. You want uh, probably about, this, this is one cup of uh, dried corn. You probably want, in a pan this size, about two-thirds or three-quarters of a cup. You want about a single layer. And these will kind of pop like popcorn a little bit, but they won't make the puff like like what you are, are used to with popcorn. It's just the, the shell breaking. All right, guys. We're just about to the point of taking it off. A little bit of seasoning to it. And as you can see, I hope they do kind of puff out a little bit towards the end. And uh, you can grind these up. And, uh, you know, the, the stories go that the Native Americans and uh, South American natives would uh, grind them up and take about a tablespoon and drink uh, a glass. You know, I don't remember how much. Pint or quart. Just drink a lot of water with it. A significant amount of water. And that would keep them going for a meal. Um, Personally, I don't see how that actually works, but, you know, whatever. Um, I will say that it is amazingly filling, and it's amazingly tasty. Um, so, uh, you guys experiment. This is how I do it. I've actually never gotten to the point of crushing it up, because uh, we end up eating it as snacks. Kind of like trail mix before uh, we ever get to the point of having to store it. Anyway, there you go guys. There's the end product. Toasted or parched corn. Now, let's immediately go on to the next one. 
So I'm actually set up for it for a change. It's the exact same process. You need a little bit of oil. Basically just enough to coat the bottom of the pan. Keep stuff from burning. We're not uh, frying anything actually. And this right here is wheat. I'm gonna do the exact same thing with it as we did with the corn. Um, um, it's hard red winter wheat is what it is. Notice this time I used a bit of restraint. Didn't pour it all in. But we're gonna toast it up, kinda of sort it till it pops. And uh, season it, use it and eat it the exact same way as the corn. Now wheat will pop too um, when you're parching it like this. Not as pronounced and not as consistently. Let's let that go for a minute. Now watch them jump around. And that's a sign you're getting close. There we go. Alright guys, so this is what we got. <clears throat> My battery died, so I'm back at the house. I'm actually plugged into the outlet here. Um, we were basically done anyway. I was just about to the point of taking the wheat off the heat. Um, this is the wheat right here. Uh, I went ahead and redid the oats. Seeing as how uh, I poured them into the bag <laughs> too hot and it melted right through and poured all over the ground. So I went ahead and redid, the, redid those while uh, we were off camera. This is the coffee beans. That is a perfect roast for me because I like it dark. I like it strong. And this is the corn. Now, um, anyway, so, so anyway guys, um, all of these you can eat, snack on, as is. Corn's just like corn nuts. It just tastes better in my opinion. Um, that batch actually is a bit more bland than usual. Those oat grouts are actually absolutely perfect. Toasted per to perfection. When you toast oat grouts or oatmeal, as uh, most ap most know it, it's just before it's flaked, so it's still in the the, the seed stage, I guess. Um, you toast it when it's raw like that. It really brings out the sweetness unless you burn it, and then it makes it bitter. My favorite is the wheat, which is my undoing because I don't usually eat wheat at all. If I'm going to choose a starchy carb, it's going to be corn, but that's just because of my diet. But anyway, those are absolutely wonderful. And coffee beans, well, while I do eat them, <clears throat> it's uh, 8 o'clock at night, so I'm not going to eat them now. I want to sleep tonight. So, anyway, guys, that's, uh, that's, um, it's not a meal. Um, it's a snack, but it's also, uh, um, I guess, a, a trail food, I guess. Um, and all of those can be incorporated into a meal. So... That is uh, number two in this series of healthy camp cooking. So I hope you guys enjoyed it, and um, you know I know I didn't I didn't pull this off perfectly, um, but you know it got the point across. I hope so. If you have any questions, just uh, comment or uh, message me, and I'll hit you back. Um, maybe even make a, a video response to answer your question because I'm sure I missed something here. So anyway, guys, um, hope you have a good week and. Uh, I'll see you on the next one.